Hey guys, what's going on? It's Brandon. So we're back to Ohio in the van already and I uh, got the Corvette right outside here. And uh, long story short, the Corvette uh, experienced the oil raising problem. Uh, we had it happen on one of the other Corvettes, uh, happened when there was detonation on the other Corvette and there was actually a salesperson on the first Corvette driving. The salesperson who sold me the second Corvette was actually driving the first Corvette Z06 when it experienced the detonation and that detonation causes the blow by um, it, it, there's gasoline that gets washed down one of the cylinder banks and it happens when one of the sides of the engines running lean the other side of the engines running rich and what causes the rich lean on the two halves of the engine is questionable fuel so what General Motors needs to do is they need to put a warning in their owner's manual like this is minimum General Motors needs to put a warning in their owner's manual and across all the groups and everything and say look questionable fuel causes our gas or excuse me causes our engine oil levels to raise because gasoline uh, washes down the cylinders in the side of the engine that is ordered to run super rich and therefore that's why we ask you guys to check your oil levels every time you fill up with fuel because if your oil level is too high you're going to bend a connecting rod so General Motors doesn't warn people about this stuff because they don't want to get sued so instead what they do is they leave people like Justin at Horsepower Obsessed to believe that it's all the dealer's faults that they overfilled your cars. And so it's just the ki kind of the scumbag company that General Motors is, things that Mark Royce and Taj Ducter do. They don't warn people the real truth of the cars. They don't tell people the real problems with the cars. Taj will tell me in private that, yeah, they need a second fuel pump, but we're never going to pay for that across all the cars. We'll just keep lemon lawing you out of all the cars, Brendan. And... Um, because that's a cheaper thing to do because a $300 fuel pump times 100,000 C7 Z06s, that's $30 million. They're never going to do that, Brandon. So the, the thing is, the C8 Z06, ironically, not only does the second in-tank fuel pump allow it to run more horsepower and avoid detonation that way, <clears throat> it also allows it to, <clears throat> excuse me, I just ate spinach, I got spinach in my throat. It also allows it to, um, to, uh, have a dedicated feed line from each low side pump up to each high side pump that you can monitor the pressure on each of those feed lines. That way, if either of the low side pumps fails, you instantly know about it. See, the moment that you splice your two low side pumps together into a single feed line, you don't know when one fails. There's no way to tell until you go to wide open throttle and experience detonation. However, if you run a dedicated feed line from each one up to the engine, or excuse me, up to each high side pump, then you know when one fails. And for those of you who say, well, Brandon, you're not very smart because that would also cause uh, the one side of the engine to run lean. Yes and no. On the high side rails, which are the really high pressure rails, what you do is you install, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a crossover line between the two. So you have each low side pump doing its macro fuel pressure regulation because they do the macro fuel pressure regulation a lot of you are very ignorant and you say brandon the low side pumps can only vary between uh you know 20 psi up to 70 or 80 psi that's not macro yes it is because that 20 to 70 80 psi feed is what dictates the high sides resulting pressure so if you only feed the high side 20 feed pressure the high side doesn't even run 2000 psi if you read if you feed the high side uh, the 80 or 70 or 80 PSI, then the high side runs uh, close to 4,000 PSI. So it changes the high side's pump performance by 2,000 PSI, depending on what you feed it from the low side pumps. So the low side pumps are the macro pressure controller. And the way that General Motors currently has the system set up, you have one macro controller trying to do macro things on two sides of an engine, which is impossible. So basically one side of the engine's running lean, because of the, the weird fuel situation, the other side of the engine's running rich because of the weird fuel situation, there's water in there. The wide bands are saying, hey, I need to run more lean. The other side's saying, I need to run more rich. The side that says, I need to run more rich always wins because you don't want to run lean. And the side that wants to run more rich is already running lean. So the system obeys. It runs more fuel pressure to run more rich on the, on the lean side. And as a result, the side that was asking to be more lean does, does not get its wish and it ends up running extremely rich. And then that extra fuel washes down the cylinders 
and that extra fuel goes into the crankcase. This has been documented across many cars, okay? And I know how to prove it. What we can do is, like an, an experiment, I'm actually gonna beg for General Motors to put a, a, a seal around the, uh, the uh, oil fill. And once they put a seal around the oil fill, like a, like a taped on seal that you can't break, or if you, if you break it, they know you broke it. Once they put that tape seal around the oil fill on this car, okay, then an easy way to prove that the problem exists so that we can show the National Highway Safety uh, Administration what's going on, we'll go put some questionable 89 octane in the car, something like that. And at that point, once you put some questionable 89 or 87 octane in the car or whatever, then what happens is, and we don't even know that it's necessarily octane, we think it's, we think it's water from the uh, severe rain, which is why the guys in Florida and Washington and Oregon experience this uh, very often. And it, we also think that it's from um, uh, snow melt, you know, water. Because what happens is the uh, gas stations have these manhole covers, and when those manhole covers get water up to them, then the water pours down into the fuel tanks. And so we've had extreme snow. Kentucky has had a lot of snow. Okay, there's been a lot of snow lately. So that snow, basically, and rain, basically got into one of these tanks of these gas stations, and the rest is history. Or maybe it was South Carolina where I got gas last, but the, the Tennessee. But the point is, whatever the place was before I got gas in Kentucky was where the caused the oil to raise, and that's why I checked the oil after every. Uh, during every gas fill up. That's what the owner's manual tells you to do. And that's why they tell you to do that. Because if you don't check your oil after every gas fill up and you say, I don't know how long it's been like that, General Motors can void your warranty. So Justin at Horsepower Obsessed doesn't report these things because he doesn't understand them. And since they're my idea and I'm teaching them, he doesn't want to look like he's second best because he has too big of an ego to say, hey, I learned something new from Brandon today. Instead, what he does is he says I'm wrong. And he says that the dealers overfill people's oil, which it's possible they do. But here's the thing, guys. All the dealer has to do when they're done with the oil change is check the level to make sure it's right while the car is idling. And assuming it's right... When Justin and his followers, 100,000 Corvette followers of Justin and Horsepower Obsessed, then have their oil raised and they come back and they say, look what happened. And the tech says, I, I checked it. It makes the tech look like a liar. And anybody who's ever owned a business before, you know that when you have liars who don't want to admit fault, you want to fire them. So this lie from General Motors, Taj and Mark Royce and Harlan and Josh Holder, and Aaron Link, this lie that they're not willing to tell you guys the truth about this problem with their car, and they know it's a problem. They know it's a problem. I've had people on the inside say that they know. Uh, the video that's being uploaded before this one, which shows me going to the dealership, they say that their inside guys know. Everybody knows that this engine had a problem, but what people don't understand is, and that it was released prematurely, what they don't understand is that the premature release was intentional. They know it has a problem, and that's the goal. There's certain people at General Motors who know it has a problem, and there's other people at General Motors who are like, we gotta fix it. And the people who know they want it to be a problem, they're like, okay, well, we're working on it. They're not really working on it. They want the engines to fail out of warranty, and they want their lawyers to protect them, and they didn't think that we were gonna be smart enough to solve the problem and expose the problem. So, Justin, Horsepower Obsessed, Keith Cornett, John Elegant, these guys are masking the problem. Uh, even chat deletes groups posts when people talk about this stuff. They mask the problems. Uh, obviously, Clayton Smith is now masking. He's a masker of these problems because that's what I was trying to explain, uh, these different things. And then I got Wendy Miller coming at me about uh, 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 Grand Sport stuff, which, by the way, again, that she's about to be proven wrong. I mean, think about this for a second. Let's get back to this Wendy Miller topic. Not only does she tell Andrew Zurich that I'm wrong, and then Andrew Zurich bets me a thousand bucks as a result of her stupidity. So she's gonna be in a box there. She's gonna make an enemy with him because he's gonna realize you have no clue what you're talking about. This Wendy Miller is a GM employee and she comes in the groups and wants to argue. Not only, okay, that, that's just the tip of the iceberg of the problems that she's about to encounter. Not only that, her credibility shot because in the group she makes fun of me in front of all these people. 
I get banned from the group because her and I get into it after she calls me the exorcist. I say, are you so dumb not to understand that? Point three, okay, point three why she's dumb, which was what I was trying to explain to her in the group is, she put up an admission that they know that I've been complaining about certain things on the car. She's a GM employee. She says she knows that they've been, that they, they're, they're well aware of my complaints and that they think that my complaints are hysterical and my complaints are a joke. Andrew Zurich also told me that. He says the people at General Motors think you're a joke. I said, not all the people at General Motors, Andrew, just the people that you know who don't know that the Grand Sport's coming. You know, low grade employees, Andrew. So Andrew's about to lose a thousand bucks because the Grand Sport is coming. Okay, it's it's coming. Um, and I promised Andrew I wasn't going to talk about it publicly, but he keeps coming on my wall and get my, get my thousand bucks ready. Okay, Andrew, <laughs> get, get, get your thousand bucks ready, dog. You get my thousand bucks ready. We'll see who has to give me. I mean, it's just it's disgusting to me how dumb these people are. They they don't understand. He doesn't get it that he's lost the bet yet. He honestly thinks that I would bet him a thousand dollars unless I, that without knowing if the Grand Sport's coming or not. So anyhow, um, the two fuel pumps allow for two separate macro controls of the high side pumps, and then after the high side pumps, you have a crossover line, which equalizes pressure on both sides. Assuming that you're what do you call it? Uh, uh, your uh oh, shit assuming that your um injectors are all the same all the way around there shouldn't be any problem with that design or you just have it where anytime your low side pump uh pressure on the low side line isn't adequate at startup car goes into limp mode and it basically just says you need to put your ass to a dealership because you don't have any fuel pressure or if the one side doesn't start at all, the engine immediately shuts off and it says, it has a, da a message across the dash. Driver side fuel pump is bad. Passenger side bank of the engine, low side fuel pump is bad. And or high side fuel pump is bad. And or passenger side high side fuel pump is bad. It would know exactly which one because you have a total of four pressure sensors. You have one on each of the low side lines, you have one on each of the high side lines. You don't need the H connection at the top at the at the high side rails. You just have four pressure sensors. But General Motors refuses to do that, and since they refuse to do that, we now have a complaint that we're going to be able to prove they can put the tape on the uh, oil fill cap so they can prove that I'm not putting gas in the oil fill. I'll go put uh, questionable fuel and those of you say, well, you're not supposed to put questionable fuel in the car, right? But the thing is, guys, questionable fuel in a regular vehicle does not cause the oil level to raise by multiple quarts to where you bend connecting rods and then you, the customer, are blamed. That's what General Motors currently has. They have a magic trick where questionable fuel causes the oil level to raise and bend the connecting rods on cold starts. That's what General Motors has invented, and that's what they've sold you guys without telling you why they want you to check the uh, engine oil levels after every gas fill up. Otherwise, they're going to void your warranty. When you pull in and say, I don't know when it happened. I don't know when it happened. 